This One Degree Outside video is brought to you by Fluidform Bio, developing innovative 3D printing living pancreatic tissue to help combat type 1 diabetes. For the first time, you can join this visionary mission. Visit fluidformbio.com or their page on Start Engine to learn more about this exciting work. Tuesday insights of the One Degree Outside Weather Network. Meteorologist Matt Noyce, plenty for you in this video, talking about unsettled weather, ready to return, not immediately, but coming in the uh, next few days. It's not going to be as cool and raw as the last time around. So there's some progress. Shower timing is going to be key for any outdoor plans. We'll look at that with at least an early call here. And it's all part of milder air expanding. Now, when I say that, I mean that in a seasonal sense. I don't necessarily mean that like, bam, look at the warmth that comes in. So if you look at the temperatures over the next 14 days, sure, we do warm a little bit. But as Danielle mentioned in pattern predictions yesterday, it's a near or maybe even slightly below normal pattern getting into next week for temperatures. So why do I say mild air expanding? It's part of this atmospheric pattern of spring, right? So I'll show it to you in just a moment. First, I want to let you know that if you see a little bit of smoke in the sky today, there is some wildfire smoke overhead. It's interesting. You look at this and you say, oh, it must be taking a path from the wildfires burning in Mexico and Texas and the Central Plains and coming over the Great Lakes. Not necessarily. Actually, this has been really astounding. While we have smoke in our sky, and it is very thin, you're not seeing a lot of it today, it's been taking a little bit of a strange and kind of rare route. Sure, some of it has been able to come over the top of a big upper level low. Much of it, though, that's over our sky has actually been swept around the belly of that low and has been coming up the eastern seaboard and surviving the trip. We don't see that happen very often. By the way, while we're looking at the jet stream, that upper level low is what's going to be lifting over us toward the second half of the week, bringing an increased chance of showers. But there is a change in the jet stream pattern as we head into the upcoming weekend and beyond. We start to see, sure, the westerlies are still over us. There's still energetic disturbances dropping from Canada. But do you notice what's missing? There's no cutoff low. There's no slow moving low that lasts days on end. So in other words, we're coming out of this very slow moving weather pattern and going into a quicker moving one. That's good. That means you get changes in weather. So even if you get disturbances and you get disturbed weather, it moves a little bit quicker. On the water vapor imagery, you can certainly see it's the satellite shot where white and green represents moisture in the atmosphere. We are still in a slow moving pattern for now. You've still got that upper level low, and that's what's going to lift over us, and that's what raises the chance of showers for us. Last 24 hours saw most of the rain on the east side of that low. As it drifts in our direction, we'll start to see those showers expand on the northeast and northern side as well. It's been dry in the last 24 hours here at home, and we'll take it. We're still flooding in spots. You can see the minor river flooding at the river gauges on the lower Connecticut River. So that'll slowly come down and then we'll add more rain to the system. But it doesn't come in one big slug. And as I mentioned, it's not necessarily raw rain that's on the way. If you look at the weather map for tomorrow, actually, there's not much rain that's in yet. And we'll take a closer look in a second. Southwest New England gets into some showers. Uh, high temperatures Wednesday. You can definitely see the influence of the cooler air holding on in the northeast corner while the warmth really surges north through the plain states, right? So we remain on the edge. And this is what I meant about milder air expanding, causing these showers. But it's not going to just happen and be done. That's okay. That's very normal for May in New England. We're supposed to be. This has been remarkable. We had a winter like we were supposed to. Uh, we're having a spring like we're supposed to. And hopefully that leads to a summer like we're supposed to. It usually does. Actually, it usually leads to a great June. But nonetheless, in the interim, you've still got this transition. So by Friday, sure, you're up into the 70s in all these areas that are in orange. And that includes a lot of New England, right? But you're going to find the chance of showers going up as well. Here's that chance of showers getting into midday Wednesday. You can see over Connecticut, western Massachusetts, the farther east you go, the lower the chances through the morning and midday. You might get a sprinkler light shower in the afternoon. The farther north you go, there's really not much to write home about at all during the course of the day tomorrow. Then we get some rain that comes in Wednesday night into Thursday morning. This is the map. Thursday morning, the rain is expanding north. You've got pockets of steady rain mixed in with showers. Midday, you're still seeing a number of showers, but as we go to the second half of the day Thursday, even though we've expanded the showers aerially up toward the Canadian border, we also are seeing the intensity wane. There'll be fewer showers later in the day Thursday than there are in the early part of the day. And that's important to note if you have any plans on Thursday, late day or evening. We get into Friday, another push of warmth, this warm front drawn in a red line coming at us. This does renew the chance of showers. We continue to believe they'll be scattered. You saw how the temperatures will shoot into the 70s, and we'll take a look at that together here in just a moment. And Saturday, I think we're into the warmth with some humidity. And because it's a very active jet stream flow, this uh, looks like we will find at least scattered showers and thunder developing 
Later on Saturday, Saturday night, you'll get a period of rain. And into Sunday, uh, you'll have at least some scattered showers left over. So how much rain do you get all told? Look, if we go through Thursday, eh, it's about a quarter of an inch, maybe less than that when you come across northern New England. But if you add in what comes with scattered showers on Friday, with the scattered storms on Saturday, with the rain Saturday night, with the leftover showers here and there on Sunday, well, now you're talking either side of an inch of rain, some spots more than that. So we continue to add to the water table as we come out of the drought that a lot of us have been. And we'll get a new update on the drought monitor coming out on Thursday morning. In the meantime, again, tomorrow with the showers starting to spread into parts of southwestern New England, particularly western, central, southwest Connecticut. That may hold your temperatures down a bit. Most, most of us can come up to about 70 degrees or so. It's a fairly mild night, Wednesday night. Humidity begins to gradually increase. There will be showers around. As we get into Thursday, we talked about the showers more so in the first half than the second half of the day overall. Temperatures likely to come up near 70 with that kind of palpable humidity. It's not going to be significant, but dew points rising into the upper 50s. Friday, here we are with the warmth, and as I mentioned, that likely carries into Saturday, but with that will come the propensity for scattered showers and thunderstorms to bubble up that may lead to that period of kind of more focused rain on Saturday night in particular. You can follow it all with our app, and you know timing is going to be really critical. We will keep you posted every day in these videos, which you'll be able to find at the top of the home screen on our One Degree Outside weather app. But of course, in here, you also have the hourly forecast, the radar page where you can go past plus future mode, see where the showers have been and where they're going, and a 14-day forecast as well. That's how it looks for now. But of course, we will keep you updated. You can always come back to the app or OneDegreeOutside.com or any of our social media channels. Our handle is the same on all of them, the number one degree outside.